Hi everybody and thanks for being here. Um, some of you know me personally, have met me. Some of you have not. Some of you I only know from the internet and I want to thank you for taking the time to read through the things that I write on this page, for taking the time to actually care about what I'm going through, and for taking the time to ask the questions that you are asking. There are no questions that are off limits. On this page, you can ask me anything and ask me openly. I am not going to hide any aspect of what this disease is doing to me in any way, shape, or form, emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. I am really wanting to be open and honest with you about what is happening to me. Not because I want you to feel sorry for me. That isn't my goal. My goal is one for me to be able to express myself and have an outlet for the emotion that I do feel and the physical pain that I do feel on my lovely little journey with CRPS and RSD. The other reason is because I want you to know what this disease is. I want you to have an understanding of what it's like for the tens upon tens upon tens of thousands of people millions of people that are suffering this worldwide right now. CRPS RSD is not something that just people like me or other adults get. You can be born with it. Let that sink in for a second. Imagine an infant, brand new baby, who is born into nothing but pain. And the pain, when I tell you it's excruciating, it is. Do I appear to be in excruciating pain right now? No, of course I don't. Is it because I'm not feeling it because of my medications? No, I'm feeling it right now. But you come to a point where you find ways to cope with it. Today I can cope a little bit. Tomorrow, or maybe in the next five minutes, I won't be able to. You don't know. We never know. I have days where I have a flare up. A flare up to me is the days where I get up and my pain level is at my regular five to seven. Now understand this, most people, when they describe their pain as a five, are looking for a, 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 a some sort of a, a, an aid to make that stop. And by that I mean when you are in the emergency room and they ask you, what your pain is on a scale of one to 10, zero to one being little to no pain, and 10 being the worst pain you've ever felt in your life. At about five, people are looking for something like morphine, something stronger than a Motrin, maybe just a little bit stronger, not as far as morphine, maybe just a little bit of Vicodin or something like that. At a seven, which is what most of my days are. People are begging for a narcotic. A good day for me is a seven. A regular day for me is a nine or a 10. Saying those words is hard. Typing them is one thing. Looking at this camera and knowing that you're gonna see this That's hard. When I say I'm burning and that we are burning, I don't mean like I got a really bad sunburn. I scalded myself. Burning from an infection, if you know what I mean. An annoying, hot feeling. I mean being burned alive in a burning building. I mean being tied to a stake and burned I feel like I am on fire all the time. And if I let my brain go there, I expect when I look at my leg to see black and red charred blistered flesh that has, is just falling off. The most horrific thing you've ever seen. I expect to see that, but what do I see? Some days I see incredible swelling. 
Other days I see very strange coloring. Other days I don't see anything at all. That's really hard. People don't understand that I don't want you to touch me. I don't want you to touch me not because I think you're disgusting, not because I am a cold, harsh, hands-off person. I can't have my children hug me all the time. Yeah, the burning is in my leg, but it's starting to affect other parts of my body. What started at my ankle and the top of my foot is now to above my knee. It is also spreading from here to here, just on the inside of both of my arms. Right now, the coloring isn't bad, but I get this weird spider web effect, which is really hard to get on camera unless it's a heavy, heavy flare up, where it gets in my arms and it hurts. Air current hurts, even a light breeze. So being around people that are throwing their arms around or anything like that, you know, when somebody will whoosh past your face and you feel that air move. If I feel that on my leg, I want to die. And when I say that, I don't say that lightly. I want to die. Am I suicidal? At points, yes. Certain moments, I am. When you believe that the only relief you will ever feel is in death, you're not afraid of it. I am more afraid to continue living than to die. Knowing that there is no cure, knowing that even the treatments that we have to help stop some of the pain are not extremely effective. The thought of facing years, let alone days, is too much sometimes. Am I going to kill myself? That's a hard question to ask because it's a hard question to answer. Sitting here right now talking to this camera, no. I have children. I have six amazing children. I have an incredible husband. I have grandchildren. I have a family and friends that I wouldn't do that to. But when I am laying in that bed behind me or on my couch or on the floor, unable to move, unable to get up, unable to breathe for the pain, those things don't matter. Those people, what turns the whole thing in your head is it would be better to be dead because then you wouldn't be putting people through watching you. Why am I saying this on camera instead of typing it? Well, right now my hands are giving me problems. And I think it needs to be spoken out loud and I think you need to hear the things that I have to say. Hear them, not just see them typed. I've met quite a few people throughout this process that are absolutely amazing. People who are fighting this the way I'm fighting. My best friend has been suffering with this for 16 years. When she was first diagnosed, we didn't know anything about it. I didn't have the internet to search. I was very limited with internet. It was 16 years ago, you could do a few things. But I tried to learn and I've tried to support her in her fight for 16 years. I thought I understood. I knew she was in excruciating pain. I knew she was. But the only pain that I could, I could equate it to was pain I had experienced up until that point. What I thought was the worst pain in the world because of what I had felt, which was childbirth without medication with my first with my firstborn which to me was the most horrifying pain of my life at that time i can tell you now honestly 
I had kidney stones and I realized kidney stones were far worse than childbirth. And I never, ever, ever wanted to go through that again. I can tell you that the pain that I'm in now, I would rather have kidney stones and be giving birth 24 hours a day with no relief than go through this. She's been fighting 16 years. And she doesn't have doctors to help her. She doesn't have the pain management that I have. I am on a fentanyl patch. I'll show it to you. It's over here today. This is my patch. Fentanyl is stronger than morphine. Look it up. It is so strong that most people, when fentanyl patches are put on them within seconds, want to sleep. <laughs> I put it on, I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything like a drugged, high, obviously I'm on medication feeling at all. I wear the patch 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's changed every 72 hours. For breakthrough pain, because this is supposed to stop the pain and it doesn't, I take Percocet. I take so much Percocet because I always have breakthrough pain. The Percocet causes me to vomit. Within an hour after I've taken it, the vomiting begins. On a good day, I vomit once or twice. On a regular day, I'm vomiting nonstop. To the point of dry heaves, where I have nothing left in my stomach and I am just heaving. I take Zofran to try and stop that. It doesn't work for me. I cannot vomit in my bathroom because I'd have to get down on the floor. If I get down on the floor, I cannot get back up. Not without help. And I don't always have someone here to help me. Because you know what? We still have a life and my husband still has to work to support us. My children still have to go to school and they still have to go play with their friends. They have to, they have to have a normal life. I vomited my kitchen sink. That is so disgusting and some of you are just Garbage disposal, stainless steel, bleach works. I can't stand up, so I have to prop myself using a folding chair and holding on for dear life to the side of the sink to keep from falling over. And this can go on for hours. Standing on my good leg. My good leg isn't so good anymore. It's taken so much strain over the last almost nine months that I'm starting to have problems with that and I'm noticing the coloring starting in that leg. This is my life. This is my reality. I'm hoping against hope that I will be able to be seen at a clinic in Winston-Salem that is very, very familiar with CRPS and RSD. It's the same disease. They just keep changing the letters. RSD stands for reflex sympathetic dystrophy, which is what they called it for very many years. CRPS is called, is, is, uh, I can't even think today, is um, complex regional pain syndrome. It's the same thing, just different names. So we tend to run them all together. But these people are experienced with this. And they have some different treatment protocols that there is a chance will work for me. But just like everything else with this disease, not everybody responds to treatment the same way. Not everybody has the same symptoms. We all have the same pain. We all are being burned alive. Some people get huge lesions and sores. At this time, I do not have them, although I have some very, very fragile 
skin on the foot in certain areas, which could at any time become these sores. And I'm noticing that I'm getting some weird tearing of the skin different places on my body. We try to self-amputate sometimes because you're driven literally to madness by the pain and trying to escape it, you'll try to amputate. Amputation usually is only done when the sores are so bad and you've got gangrene and they don't heal that to save your life, they have to amputate or because you've already done it halfway and done such a horrible job because you're not a surgeon that they have to take whatever part of your body it is. Can you imagine sitting down and taking a blade of any type and sawing off your own finger while you sat there? Unmedicated. The pain is so bad that you're able to sit and do it. What stops you is that you don't have a sharp enough instrument or the right instrument to get through the bone. That's the pain that I feel. Is it crippling? Yeah. I have no strength in my left leg from the knee down. My ankle, if I am not in my prosthetic, can roll at any time, causing more damage. I can break it. We start suffering bone loss. I'm gonna lose all of my teeth from the constant vomiting. The stomach acid, I don't care, you can't brush your teeth enough times or rinse your mouth enough when you're vomiting nonstop. I can't dance anymore. I can't practice martial arts. I was doing Tai Chi on my good days. Well, my good days have gotten to be bad days and worse days. Once in a very long while, I'm able to walk through a store. I will not be able to walk on the beach with my husband. When we retire, I won't be able to go the places that we had dreamed of going because I will probably be wheelchair bound and the pain will be so intense that travel will be next to impossible. You try traveling it into another country with heavy narcotics and large amounts of them. I will never wear anything but flat or orthopedic shoes again. Maybe some of you are laughing at that, but for me, that was a big thing to give up. I don't drive unless I have to because I'm on this medication and it would be dangerous. Sometimes even with the medication, I black out. I'm incontinent. I have to use adult diapers. At least the pads right now. It's not all the time, but it does happen. And that's humiliating. I'm gonna be 42 this year, this shouldn't be happening. I walk with a cane and I always will. We give up our lives when it comes to this. And then we listen to people say, it's not that bad. You just don't wanna work. If you would get out of the house more, you'd feel better. It's all in your head.
I mean, I know you gotta walk with a cane, but it's not like you're crippled. <laughs> Why am I showing you the photos of what happens to me? I'm crippled. There are other people out there that are suffering far worse than you with real diseases. This isn't real. What are you saying? Snap out of it. You don't look sick. You're just lazy. If being burned alive were not enough, we suffer that. So I want to show you my pain so that maybe you can help educate the rest of the world. So that they won't treat others that way. When you go to bed at night and you lay there and you can't let anything touch the affected part of your body, whatever that is, and some people have full body RSD. Full body. Most of us have had nights where we can't sleep and we just pray to sleep. And there are people suffering from diseases where they just pray to wake up the next morning. We pray that we can go to sleep and not wake up. We do. You're ungrateful. You've been given another day and so-and-so didn't get that. You wouldn't want another day if your mind was telling you and your brain was registering that your body was on fire and you are being burned to death, but death never comes. You wouldn't want that next day. I'm doing this because I want you to learn. I want you to learn about what this does. I want you to learn about how badly people with this do suffer. That it's far more common than you know. That we need to find a cure. You're on my page. You've seen me post that I'm going to be a virtual walker in the Achilles Walk for Hope. I'm going to stay, say this because I can say whatever the hell I want to on this. So many people will share it, like it. You go, Sharon. But will you donate even a dollar towards a cure? All I'm asking for is a dollar. And I'm not getting the money. It doesn't come to me. I never see it. It goes to the people who are researching and trying to help us. A buck. Most of us commit suicide. The ones that die. Others die from organ failure, and it gets written up as kidney, liver, heart failure, but they don't give you the cause of that. When this goes to your internal organs, it stresses them so much that they fail. How fast can it spread? It can take years or it can take minutes. Mine stayed 
below the knee for quite a long time. I woke up one morning and it was above the knee like that. I don't know when it's going to spread again. It just recently has started to manifest itself in my arms and in my hands. If I don't get treatment soon, it will take over. I'm not being treated correctly because I'm dealing with workers' comp. There's nothing I can do. Am I feeling sorry for myself? No. This is my world and my reality. My world has been reduced to my living room and bedroom and bathroom and doctor's offices. Doctors who don't know this disease. And the only place I can go to find doctors who do understand this disease is being fought by workman's comp. To those of you who are on here who suffer this, you know what I'm saying is true. You feel this pain. We would give anything to make it go away. All we can do is support each other and cry with each other. I cry more now than I ever have in my life with the pain. And then I have to pull it together and appear to be all right. And you know what I'm talking about. We have to put on this front that we're just fine. Because if we don't, we get those comments. That's why I'm doing this. I appreciate you being here and I appreciate the questions that you ask because it tells me that you do want to know and you want to understand and you care. It's not pretty and I won't candy coat it. Thank you for listening to me. And if you made it all the way through this video, I'm stunned, I'm honored, and I'm grateful, and I'm humbled. This is my world. I'm going to share it with you if you want to know. And I'm going to keep sharing it. I was told not to post any more of this on my regular Facebook page because it's offensive to other people. It's offensive to hear that I don't want to breathe anymore. It's offensive to hear that I'm in pain when other people are suffering far worse than I am. I'm not downplaying anybody else's suffering. I'm saying that nobody should have the right to downplay mine, but they do. And it's coming from people that You'd be surprised. Am I fighting for my life? Yes. Am I going to document that fight? Yes. Am I going to edit myself in any way, shape, or form when it comes to this channel, this page, this disease? No. This is my reality. This is my life. I will have good days. This is a good day. This is what I'm like on a good day. And I'm going to show you my bad days too. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for caring. And thank you for taking the time to learn what we suffer and what we go through. No question is off limits. And I will always answer you completely honestly. I have to stop now. I've talked for too long. 
and it's time to go take the medication that makes me throw up. Thanks for being there.